Mary Beth Pritchett, auditioning for Martha. Aren't you going to dress me first? Can I not dress the self? In India, my eye addressed me. Well then, it'll do the good to wait on the self a bit. Oh, Tis fair a wonder grand folks' children don't turn out fair fools, being washed and took out to walk like they was puppies. What is this language you speak? Well, of course, you not heard any Yorkshire living in India, have you? <laughs> Mrs. Medlock said I'd have to be careful or you wouldn't understand what I was saying. But I don't know what to expect from you either. When I heard you was coming from Bombay, I thought you'd be solid brown, I did. But you're not brown at all. Or yellow, I'd say. <laughs> hey, now lassie. Oh, I didn't know you'd be so easy vexed. I'll help you on with your clothes this time, if you like. You can pretend you're back in India and I'm your servant and you just give me that little yellow foot. I'm quite all right, thank you. Look there, out the window. It's the moor it is. Like a dull purple sea this morning. Do you like it? I hate it. Ah, you wait till spring then. But the moor is fair, covered in gorse and heather. And there's such a lot of fresh air. My brother Dickon, he goes out and plays on the moor for hours. He's got a pony he's made friends with him. And birds and sheep and such that eats right out of his hands. These are not my clothes. I miss your uncle. Those are nicer than mine. Well then, you get these new clothes on then and wrap up warm and you run out and play. He'll give you stomach for your porch. Mrs. Medlock told me there's nothing out there but a big old park. Well then, maybe you're running to our dickin. Maybe he'll give you a ride on his pony. Maybe I'll... I don't know anything about boys. <laughs> Mary, you've nothing to do with your uncle's leaving. But weren't you, child? Your uncle liked you. I know he did. Didn't he tell you you could have a garden? Didn't he send you clothes and bring you books? Well, didn't he? McCann's going to die and it's all my fault. And what have you done for Colin, except get him going outside every day and get him eating his food and getting him believing he could get strong again? I think you were just what Colin needed. But you know, the doctor, Martha, will you tell him I'm sorry? I mean, after I'm gone, will you tell him I didn't mean to hurt him, that I didn't want to go? I think you should tell him that yourself. I can't, Martha. He'll just get mad and start acting all high and mighty. And then Dr. Craven might send him away too. You're talking like you're already gone, Mary. I am gone, Martha. I wish I were a ghost. No ghost could do what you do in this house, Mary. What you've got to do is finish what you've begun. I don't know just how, but it's not over till you've won. When you see the storm is coming, see the lightning part the skies, it's too late to run. In your eyes, what you do then is remember this old thing you heard me say. It's the storm, not you, that's bound to blow away. Hold on, hold on to someone standing by. Hold on, don't even ask how long or why. Try and hold on to what you know is true. Just come.
home flying at you from across the